Hi you guys, welcome back. We are gonna be finishing up our prep work for the sew along that we're doing for Simplicity 9642, this cutie little dress here. And today is all about cutting out our fabric. So if you're following along in the sew along workbook, this is a free asset that I designed to work in conjunction with the sew along to help you stay organized and stay on track in terms of timing as we make our way through making this project. Um, but if you're, this is the very first video of the sew along that you're seeing, there have been three additional prep work videos ahead of this one, um, about finding your size, making alterations, and just talking through some ideal fabrics for this pattern. Um, and today we're going to focus on getting the pattern cut out. I'm going to show you the pattern layouts, uh, that are recommended in the pattern and then if those don't work out, um, how to sort of make your own layout, which is totally fine. We make the rules, right? Um, so without further ado, let's get to the cutting table um, where we can start getting some of this stuff cut. The, this pattern is pretty straightforward in terms of cutting layouts. If you're making dress A, these are the pieces that you use. These are your layouts. If you have 45 inch fabric with nap, meaning there's like a direction to it, either uh, either like the flowers on mine all face one way. So there's like a right, there's a top side and a bottom side, or if you're using velvet and you know, you run your hand across one way and it's one color and you swipe it the other way, it's another color. That's what nap means and all your sizes. And so all you do is fold your fabric in half, selvage is matching, right sides together and cut out these pieces. And then this is what you do for your sleeve. And I think this is one of the skirt pieces. Then this layout is for view A also, but if you're using 60 inch fabric with nap. And it looks like because the cover model was wearing that velvet fabric, because they recommend velvet fabric, all of these are gonna be uh, cutting layouts with nap. and. What it means in terms of cutting layouts is that the tops of all of the pattern pieces, so this is like your shoulder and this is the like under bust seam. This is your waist seam. This is the hem. This is the top of your sleeve, the bottom of your sleeve. You see what I mean? They're all facing the same way. I do this anyways, um, just because in addition to nap, there can be like color variation in your fabric that you couldn't see when it's just laid out on your table, but when you sew a sleeve to a shoulder, for example, when those two seams butt up, if this color was slightly different than this one, it would be more noticeable. So I always do this. So it's really no change on my end, except I can actually follow their layouts and I don't have to make up my own. But if you're doing view A with 60 inch fabric, this is you here. If you're doing dress B, it gets a little bit more complicated because this layout for view B is only for sizes four through 14. This is your 45 inch fabric too. If you're doing the 45 inch fabric and you have the larger of the sizes, 16, 18, 20, this is me, um, then you do this layout. And then here's your 60 inch layout for B. And then dress C, same difference. Sizes are split between four and 16 and 16 and 20 on the 45 inch fabric and then the 60 inch fabric they're all on one so identify which dress you're making which size you are and the width of your fabric and that'll help you figure out the layout that you need i'm 99 percent sure my fabric is not quite 60 inches but more than 45 i'm just gonna do a quick measurement here it's 54 inches so i'm gonna try and eke mine out of the 60 inch width here um because it's in between but it's closer to 60 than it is 45 so i'm going to try and do it here see what happens so i'm going to just lay this all out and then take the camera off the tripod and show you what i've done so sit tight well you don't have to sit very long i'm just going to edit the video so <laughs> here you go here magic of the youtube here is my here's my pattern pieces all laid out okay quick update um i was trying to do the 60 inch width that didn't work because when you lay out piece 10 there's not enough space on my 54 inch fabric to fit these. This is truly like a 60 inch width fabric, very little wiggle room there. So I couldn't do that. So I opted to try and do the 45 inch um, diagram. And when I did that, I don't have enough for the sleeve. As you can see, piece nine down there is hanging off. So I'm going rogue. I'm gonna do my own thing. 
I am going to back into the ruffle pattern. So I'm gonna do the sleeve on the single thickness first, and then I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna get all these pieces done and see what I have left um, and divide that by three ruffles. So my ruffle is not going to be as long as View B's is um, in the pattern, and that's gonna be fine. As long as I have a ruffle of some kind, I think I'll be happy, even if it's the View C ruffle. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so sleeve is cut. I did my own layout where I have eight upside down, seven, one A, two upside down, nine upside down. And the upside down part is just to really make the most of all of these little nooks and crannies so that you can get, you know, everything kind of pieced together. Okay, and after I do that, and I measure the length of fabric I have left is 33 inches. So 33 divided by three is 11. So give or take some for just in case. Um, I'll go with a 10 inch ruffle, which takes me just one inch below view A. So, I mean, I guess I could just cut view A, but I don't know, I wanna try and make it as long as possible. If it's weird, then I can always just take a bigger hem. So that's the plan. If you have 54 inch fabric, um, yeah, say la vie, it is what it is. All right, and just a reminder, as you are cutting out your pattern pieces, don't forget to mark your notches and your darts. We're gonna have um, the back skirt has a dart and the back of the bodice has a skirt, and that should be it for darts. I use this tracing paper and a tracing wheel. If you need detailed tutorial on darting, and then also you'll happen to get a lot of really great information about a lot of other sewing techniques, I'm gonna refer you to my e-course, my Sewing Basics e-course. You'll go over darts, pleats, straps, like all the little superfluous things that you need to know while sewing. So I'm gonna link that in the description box. I am so excited for this sleeve. Look at all of these pleats. So I wanted to show you how I mark my pleats because I ain't got time to trace all this out. So at the little dots, I'll put in an actual triangle notch. And then here at all of these intersections where the, not intersections, but at all these little marking lines, I'll just put a little clip. And that's enough for me to know that this one goes here and this one goes here. I'm also gonna keep all my pattern pieces out so I can refer to that as I get to that step. Another thing is down here, there are two additional pleats. Uh, you don't forget to mark these down here. And then also these guys, we're gonna actually do like one where it comes up together like this to give us a horizontal pleat as well. So exciting, it's so cool. All right, well, just as I suspected, my fabric gave me a little bit of a headache in terms that it wasn't either width. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to have the full long ruffle that I wanted, but that's gonna be okay. I went ahead and cut out the netting and the interfacing that I need for this project. And I'm telling you guys, going ahead and doing that now, even though you don't have to, you don't have to do that now. You can sew like two or three steps of this pattern before you'll actually need your interfacing and even more steps before you'll need your um, netting or your organza or whatever you're using. But I promise you, if you just go ahead and do it now while you have all the tools out, it's the bitter end. I know all we're ready to do is just get ahead with sewing, but if you go ahead and cut those things out, go ahead and adhere your interfacing to the fabric. I promise it'll make for just such a more enjoyable sewing process. You won't have to get out any of your cutting supplies. You won't have to stop and, you know, you just get into a rhythm whenever you're sewing and we don't want to have to stop to handle those things later on. So I am going to tell you, you must absolutely from your teacher to the student, cut out your interfacing and netting and go ahead and apply your interfacing. And while we're at it, while I'm sitting here bossing you guys around, I'm going to tell you to go ahead and clean your machine, like just, just with a little, you know, brushy thing, not like a full on service or anything by any means, but just take a little brush through the bobbin case. Okay. Change your thread, change the needles, change your serger thread, change your serger thread needles, and literally close down today with everything ready to go as if you were gonna start sewing immediately. I mean, some of you are probably gonna do that. But if you're watching this video and you're gonna take a little bit of a breather in between the prep work and actually sewing, I get that, it's kind of a lot. Um, just go ahead and get everything set up. That way, if there's one less 
like hurdle for you to get over when you get into your sewing room. I know for me, sometimes I'm like, man, I really, I really do want to sew because I have to change my needles and I have to change the thread. So if you go ahead and just get it all done now, you have kind of a blank slate. Everything's ready to go waiting for you when you're ready to come in here and start the actual sewing. So with that, if you're able to do all of those things that I am demanding absolutely that you must do or else, then you'll be able to check off everything in your prep work checklist from the workbook. Um, it feels really good, really satisfying to do that. And then we can just get started with the sewing. Um, and we'll start on day one with the bodice and the skirt and make our way through this pattern. Um, so if you have any questions, as I've said in the previous prep work videos, the best way, like general comments and questions, the comment section here on YouTube is great. But if you need to have like a conversation, like a back and forth with me, Instagram DMs is way better. YouTube's functionality for conversation is not great. Plus on DMs, you can send me a picture. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for our prep work. The next time you will see me, it will be all about, um, getting started sewing this bad boy. So I'm excited. The hard part is over. Now the fun part begins. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.